Welcome to another video. Tonight I'm working on this little larch. Um, it's that time of year that you need to kind of get things prepped for winter. I think I mentioned in another video, larches do not like wire on during the winter months. Um, any freezing weather, for some reason the wire does affect the tree, especially small trees ones with not a lot of um, sap, antifreeze basically. Um, so exercise of this evening is to take the wire off, um, get rid of all the old needles um, and just do a little bit of pruning, um, reduce it back. Um, it's really great this time of year because you can see where all the buds are um, and the whole skeleton of the tree. Um, even very big, you can see the size of my hand. He's only a little babby. Um, I think it's a European larch. Um, not 100%. I bought it from a garden centre. Um, oh, probably four years ago. It was a stick. <laughs> it's, it's a wonky stick now. Um, no, but when this... Um, when this needles out, it is it is quite quite an attractive little tree. Uh, it's got an unusual shape. Um, I like my unusual shapes. Um, a lot of the trees I've been showing on my videos are starter trees because I think it's a good idea to log, and you guys then can go back and look at how they were and how they're progressing. Plus, it's good for me because YouTube is free storage. <laughs> it's free storage for videos so it's good it's good all rounder um so yeah all the trees that i've been showing lately they're all a bit quirky um a lot of you out there are probably thinking oh my god what's you know what's he got there but the thing is the way i look at it is um these weird and wonderful trees that you see um they don't start off as your bog standard bonsais. It's just, it's impossible to create some of these masterpieces just by sticking to the rules. Um, not that I'm saying there's any rules in bonsai, because I'm a great believer of going against rules, um, in bonsai that is. But um, I think if, you, if you're gonna ever, ever create something for the future, you've gotta, you've gotta make it look a bit bizarre to begin with. Um, to give it that interesting, unique characteristic. Um, so that's my approach. So when you look at the trees and you think, the blimmin' hell is that? I think the same, but also on the same kind of viewing, I, I look to the future. I, I look to see what this tree will be like in, say, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 50 years. Somebody else would probably have it, hopefully. And that's the idea of bonsai. Um, I keep trees, but hopefully, oh, hang on, we've got um, we've got visitors. You coming in? Don't touch the camera. Sorry about that. Back in the room. Uh, yeah, that was just uh, that was Beth. She was just dropping the dog off. Um, Katie, she's down here. So if you see the camera jump around a bit. It's because um, she's, um, she's bumbling around chasing the cats, <laughs> which is highly entertaining. <laughs> Bless them. You know it be? Banksy's up on the worktop. Hello, Katie. Do you want to say hello? Do you want to say hello? Can you say hello in a minute? Bless you. Right, you're going to chill out. So anyway, where were we? Um, talking about styling and... Um, Keep keeping trees. So yeah, what was I saying about keeping trees? So my weird and wonderful sticks, as I as I call them, um, I I try and vary my designs. Um, try and vary it as much as I can, um, because I think it's it's very important for future future development, future styling future characteristics of a tree. It makes it unique. Um, 
I'm not to say, you know, I'm not saying that this tree will always stay like this. Um, a lot of trees don't because they live for years. Um, but my, my philosophy of bonsai is to um, look after and maintain the already matured trees the best I can. Um, and not get carried away with them, i.e. don't change the design. Um, or starter trees, I like to push the boundaries of of what I see. Um, I'm not saying that all the trees you see in the world are, are all the same, they're certainly not, but um, my idea is that you, you need to push design limits. Um, some work, some don't, but it's not to say that the ones that don't work won't work one day. If that makes sense. Um, so anyway, that's that's my view. Um, that's my approach, really. Um, and hopefully, say one day, somebody else will have this tree um, in 50 years time. Um, it won't look anything like this, but it might have the, the a, a similar structure um so yeah that's that's my outlook so don't be afraid of really pushing the boundaries and trying to design something a little bit different um because i think although it's not really appreciated now one day it possibly could be um and that's yeah that's my outlook on bonsai um Almost like leaving my own stamp on something. Um, <laughs> my own stamp on sticks. <laughs> Brilliant. So next step, I think, in this video, what we're going to do, um, I'm going to stop waffling on. Um, I'll set up the camera a little bit closer, and then we can look at this tree in detail. Um, and then just give it a, a once-over, tidy up. We're certainly going to take the wire off. The prune inside would probably just take off um, the dead, the dead that we don't need. And also just a couple of small um, nips here and there. I don't want to leave too many open wounds because I say they're, they are quite sensitive for the, for the winter months. So I don't want to leave too many wounds open. Um, there's the dog. <laughs> right, Katie? Hello babies. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. So we'll come back in a minute when everything's set up. Um, I'll feed the dog as well. You want some biscuits? Yes. Okay, right. See you in a bit, guys. Right. We've zoomed in. Um, I think the first thing we're going to do is just nip this wire off. Um, the wire hasn't been on that long. Um, this year I've I've wired it every year I've had this tree um, but as I say because I take it off annually it doesn't always set and I say that it's, it's quite an extreme bend in it um, but that's okay because I don't want to damage it um, I don't want too much cutting in, although larches do um, do heal well. Um, you you can get some quite um, odd looking inverse tapers when they do um, heal back. So it's one of those where you, if you're going to do it, you've got to continually cut in to balance out the cuts that you did. The previous year, if that makes sense, um, to have one one wire cut all the way up the trunk it does look odd. So if you are going to take that kind of technique and um, apply it, um, it is a commitment. Um, it's noticeable straight away. I mean, you've noticed you probably noticed it on my other trees um, where the wires cut in. And it is ugly and it's not the right way of doing things 
but if you continue and you get it right and you balance out those um, those wire cuts you can get a really nice um, effect um, but it's it's time it is time a lot of time but then that's bonzo for you okay right being a little bit gentle with it there's a lot of buds on here that I certainly want to keep um, I want to keep this wire because you know what I'm like with recycled wire <laughs> I do want to keep it. I think go gently with it. I think we'll be all right. You can see down here. I'm working my way down the trunk. See, you can see existing wire cuts. But there, there has been every year. And you see how well they um, heal. Um, around here. They're not too obvious. As I say, if you continue doing it and space them out, also use different size wire. Um, it doesn't always help you with the um, the holding of branches or trunk. But you, I always find if you can get away with it, try and use different size wires. If you if you if you're gonna take that approach of the wire cutting in, because it adds different depths. Not as uniformed. As I say, I, I do it with a lot of starter trees. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's a nice gnarly effect. I mean, up here, there's a few cuts. But this is, um, this is very recent. You can see others all the way up. All the way up through. But they'll heal. And they'll blend in. They'll give it a nice gnarly look. All these little lumps and bumps can add to it in the future. The Nabari on this um, isn't brilliant, um, but it's something that we can work on. I don't think this tree has a front or a back yet, so I've got quite a range of options. When it comes to the Nabari, the root base, we'll um, we'll certainly look at that in in the new year. Because what I'm going to do is take it out this little pot. Um, I do like this pot, but I think it deserves slightly a slightly bigger one. And as I say, then we can work on the um, on the roots. There's some lovely buds on here, really fat buds. I say this, um, I think it's a, a European larch, as I say. Um, I'm not 100%. I bought it from a garden centre and it didn't have any details on it. Um, so I'm assuming it's a European one. But what I do find with this one, because um, I've got a couple of larches, um, European ones, and um, this one always needles out really early, a lot earlier in the year, in the spring, than the others. Um, it just, I don't know, it just seems to just want to get going really early. Um, even when the temperature's still a little bit cold. But consequently, it loses its needles um, early. So this started losing needles probably, I'd say about a month ago. Yeah. Um, when you look at the other larch, the big larch outside on the wall, um, that's still got um, bright green needles on it. So, don't know, not sure. Maybe that, I mean, somebody out there might go, oh, it's because it's, it's not a European, it's, I should look into it really, I should do, but um, yeah, he, um, he always needles out early and gets rid of them early, but he's done it every year, so I'm not, not concerned. So 
So I had to put my hand in the way because I had to support that little bit of the branch. So there's some really fat buds on this. They're looking good. They are looking good. And coming at the top here. Coming from behind. Yeah, I do um I do like working on larches and I love the vibrance of them. Love the that bright green in the spring. And I say when this one needles out before any of the others, before most things really in the garden, it's a it's a happy time. You know, spring's on its way. Okay, All right. I don't think I'm going to go to the extent of um, trying to get every bit of wire off in the hole. Um, sometimes you've just got to sacrifice a bit of wire. I don't want to damage any of the buds. Also, it has slightly cut in again, slightly, not a lot. I'll just nip it. Nip the wire. Be interesting to see if it's set. Um, when I um, wire um, certain trees, especially this large, because I know the wire isn't on that long, um, there's a possibility it won't set exactly where you want it to. So I very often um, go beyond the point of where I want it. So when the wire is taken off, as it settles in, settles back, it goes into the position roughly where you visioned it to be. I do that with a privet as well, the old Ligustrum. Again, I don't like to wire that um, too much. And I don't like to leave the wire on it because it cuts in. Um, don't want too many scars on the privet. But because of that, um, I do find that when you take the wire off, it generally goes back to exactly where it was when you started. Which um, is annoying, but you know the tree is only doing what it wants it to do. So you can't fight it. Got to go with it. And so you got to, you got to have full respect, really. You're trying to make the tree do something it doesn't want to do. So He's pretty good. He's certainly pretty good. As I say, I, I wire this every year. Um, not, not necessarily in the same place. But I always put wire on it. Um, and it hasn't changed in design. The shape of this trunk was from day one. When it was um, when it was a tiny stick, um, but because it's it's a young plant, they do tend to try and straighten up, especially when you put in extreme bends in like this. The um, as soon as the sunlight hits these flat areas, you can see because. Um, because these are, are very much in the sun. The sun's coming down onto it. It just wants to go up naturally. All that part of the trunk, all those, all that part of the tissue was getting all excited. Um, that's basically what, what makes a plant move towards the sun. It's heat difference 
different part areas of the branches, different areas of the trunk that warm up, make everything more ex more excitable. So when they when they say a plant follows the sun, it does. But it's the um, it's the sunlight that's hitting the the, the tissue. I always I always imagine it a bit like those you know those fish that you get in you used to get at Christmas time and Christmas crackers. <laughs> those fortune fish, whatever they were called, and you put them in your palm and your hand and they bend and move. And all it is is just heat transfer. But it's the same principle. Different areas excite the plant. And that's how they go towards the sun because they haven't got eyes they can't see the sun they got to feel it although some people may argue right, how are we looking you can see there's a, there's a few lovely buds there aren't there a few lovely buds God, this tripod keeps stiffening up i'm gonna have to get some some oil on it or something. When you were quite close here, this is proper close camera work. This is I'm liking it. I've been looking at um, backdrops because um, although the bamboo, when I'm working on trees and the bamboo's in the background, it looks great. But when I look back on videos, because of the way that um, everything is digitally done nowadays, I do find that the um, some of the twigs and fine tertiary branches clash with the bamboo in the background. So yeah, I've been looking at different backdrops. Um, so black is definitely on my list. I'm going to get some black cloth um i didn't get any today because i was setting up this table i've got a new um work surface slightly bigger than the other one well the other one's in the background as you can see it's the white one but um i had an old desk in the shed and um it's much bigger and also it gets me out of the way believe it or not some of the videos I'm in the way and I do apologize it must be really frustrating for you guys get out of the bloody way I can just imagine you not shouting at the TV or your phone in the way again <laughs> so it's all trial and error it's all trial and error but yeah backdrops gonna look into getting some some black cloth um, and just make a frame up. Um, it was nice the other day working on that um, procumbens outside. Um, I say that the weather's been absolutely rubbish lately. It did actually start raining when I was doing that, but um, I persevered. So yeah, hopefully the drier weather, I don't mind if it's cold out, it's fine. Cold weather doesn't bother me, but it's just the wet. Really annoying. How are we looking on this camera? Because it's so close. I did have a word with Beth actually, when she dropped the dog off. And I did ask her very nicely if she, if she wouldn't mind um, doing a bit of camera work. She agreed. She's good. She's a good girl. But yeah, it would be nice. As I say, this is all, all new to me. Oh, hello. That's how close the camera is. I'm bashing it. I say it's all it's all new to me. Not 
one for cameras and all that. But it's good. We'll get there in the end. It's a little bit knotty around here. I'm trying to be so careful not to damage any of these little buds. Yeah, so I did a, a little video earlier, short video, um, just mentioning the um, the unfortunate um, theft that was at Herons. Um, don't know if anybody watched that little short video, but it was just making everybody aware of um, of this theft that was at the nursery at Herons. Um, quite sad really when you think about it but yeah it's um it's worth um if you guys are on i don't know ebay or gumtree or facebook marketplace or anything like that um yeah just keep an eye out of um trees that are for sale um as i say on on the herons youtube channel um peter chan did um did show some photos of the trees that got nicked yeah not good but i don't know You can get angry with things like that, but on the flip side, um, people do desperate things. Um, you know, in desperate times. They're obviously skint, got no money. So it's, yeah, it's quite sad really. But anyway. Hopefully the trees will be re recovered and found in one piece. That's what annoys me about things like that. It's the tree that suffers. You know. Right. How are we looking down there? It's looking good, isn't it? It's looking good. Well, we're just see, there's not many needles on here. They're all they've all come off in the rain and the wind that we've had. Right, all the wires off. There's a few little draggy, spindly bits down here. There's there's a bit of um. Bit of confusion going on. But I think um, I'm not going to do a lot. I'm just going to clean up the dead. I'm not going to snip the ends, I don't think. I'm not going to leave any open wounds. I'll just get rid of the dead bits on the end. At the top, where are we at the top? Okay, yeah, so on the apex, we got this one shooting straight up. Um, by the looks of it, I've got a tiny little bud, tiny. You can see that poking out just there. There is one there, it's very weak. Um, and we have obviously this dead straight one. Um, I've been looking at it in the last week or so and I'm thinking that's going to have to go um, but I don't think I will nip him off I don't think I will 
I think what I'll do is I'll leave it. There's a bud under there that I definitely don't need. We'll just remove that one. I'm going to leave that straight bit. Because um, you will bud out. There's two buds on top. It will give a little bit of a... Bit of a definition on top. A bit more of a... Um, asymmetrical feel I think I'll leave that and then just keep an eye on it um, in the growing season just nipping back so you didn't get too long yeah basically just have a good old clear out So looking at it, there isn't there isn't that much dead on it. We can probably just clean up the top of that. Um, yeah, I think I think we're, we're looking pretty good. We're looking pretty good. A few little needles there that just need rubbing off. And these are still attached. Okay, well, I think we'll leave it like that. I say I don't want any open wounds really on the ends of these um, fine branches. So they're very sensitive in the winter. Right, okay, I think we're looking all right. We're looking good. A few needles under there as we get rid of them. Blow them off. There we go. Right, we'll zoom back out, um, and I'll I'll do the rest of the filming by hand. Actually, and we can actually get in there and have a good look, because at the minute it's quite a, a two dimensional view on the camera. So bear with me. I'll have a tidy up, and we'll come back. Okay, so there's a top view of the tree. Um, he's gone back a little bit this one was more more in but that's fine um could do a pull in a little bit so this angle isn't the same as this curve but at the minute i think um he's looking quite quirky for a stick um let's say the amount of buds on here they're everywhere now obviously I won't keep them all, but generally what I do is I just let it needle out and then remove them through the growing season, the ones that I don't need. So yeah, it's quite a quirky shape. From all angles it looks good. This one's a little bit long, um, but I think it's sacrificial at the minute. Um, it's drawing up a lot of energy through this branch or through this part of the branch. Um, and I want back budding. Um, so what I'll, I'll do the same. I think I'll wait until it all needles out and then just reduce it down to the first two, nip, nip these off. And then hopefully it'll um, create a little bit of back budding. Um, there are a few buds along there. New one there. Let's bring it in. There's a bit of a weird scenario going on here. Got one coming down, one going up. Um, but yeah, all in all, I think I'll leave it um, and see how it settles because it might settle down over the next couple of days. Now I've taken the wire off. He's quite long that one when you look at it. And bring him in. But that's something we can deal with. So yeah, there we go. A little little larch. Um I say I'm not sure what type of larch it is. I think it's a European, I'm guessing. 
but um, yeah, lovely little tree. So there we go, he's all cleaned up, dewired. I'll put him um, on the bench. Generally, I anything I think is a bit um, vulnerable, um, like this and white pines, things like that, um, I tend to um, leave them higher off the ground in a sheltered area. Um, so they're not ground level. Um, because ground temperature can very often stay cold through the day. Um, whereas if it's off the ground on a bench, on a wooden bench, um, the sun warms it up if, if we ever get any sun. But um, yeah, basically keep it away from ground temperature. Um, keep it out of the wind. Keep it out of cold wind and all that. Um, yeah, so I think, again, this tree is going to be great in the future. One to to revisit definitely um, we'll source another pot for it although I do like this pot it's quite a nice little semi cascade pot um, but I think it needs a little, something a little bit bigger um, different shape as well um, but we'll, we'll try a few things in the spring I am collecting pots I have been for ages um, any little pots and or big pots um, that I'm fortunate to either purchase or acquire I have been collecting a few so we got a good selection in the spring um, to play around with things so yeah there we go one little arch thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again cheers guys